Alexandra was born in Denmark in remarkably modest surroundings, unaware of the grandeur that would later fill her life as a queen and empress at the height of the British Empire. She was born in the Yellow Palace, a quaint townhouse adjacent to the Amalienborg Palace in Copenhagen. Her family were a distant cadent branch of the Danish royal house of Oldenburg, which had declined into relative insignificance by this time. Her father's income was a modest trickle from an army commission, and their house was a rent-free grace and favour property. In 1848, King Christian of Denmark died, sparking a succession crisis which ended with major European powers calling a conference in London. An agreement was reached, which made Alexandra's father, Prince Christian of Schleswig-Holstein, Sonderburg, Glücksburg, heir to Frederick's throne in all his dominions. Although the family's status had risen, their income hardly changed. Alexandra shared a drafty attic room with her sister Dagmar, made her own clothes, and waited at a table along with her sisters. When Princess Alexandra was sixteen, she met Albert Edward, Prince of Wales, called Bertie by his family and friends, the heir to Queen Victoria's throne. A legendary story of their meeting finds Prince Albert Edward out shooting with a party of friends. One of his friends took a photograph of a beautiful girl wearing a white muslin gown and a loose white jacket with a black velvet ribbon around her throat and her hair smoothed back from her forehead. The Prince of Wales quickly discovered her identity and arranged to tour the continent making a special stop in Denmark to meet Princess Alexandra. He met her at the Cathedral of Worms in southern Germany and while he talked to the princess, his personal servant took pity on a shy-looking man wandering around the cathedral. Thinking that the man was part of the retinue of the princess, the servant spent some time chatting with the man. Later he learned that he had been talking to King Christian IX of Denmark the father of Princess Alexandra. The official story of the meeting of the future King and Queen of England is slightly less romantic. Acting on a request from her parents, Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, Crown Princess Victoria of Prussia, introduced her brother, Albert Edward, the Prince of Wales, to Alexandra on September 24, 1861, in Speyer, a city of Rhineland Palatinate. Germany. The Queen and King were searching for a suitable wife for their son, Albert Edward, the Prince of Wales, although they didn't consider Alexandra one of their top choices. Queen Victoria had reservations about the suitability of the match, because when the German Confederation invaded and annexed Schleswig-Holstein, Queen Victoria adamantly took the German side and Alexandra and her family just as adamantly embraced the Danish position. Albert Edward took some time to break off his affair with Nellie Clifton, but finally, on September 9, 1862, he proposed to Alexandra at the Laken Royal Palace, the home of King Leopold the Fide of Belgium, his great-uncle. After her engagement, Alexandra travelled from Denmark to Britain, aboard the Royal Yacht Victoria and Albert II, arriving in Gravesend, Kent, on March 7, 1863, to a royal and literary welcome when poet laureate Alfred Lord Tennyson wrote an ode in her honour. Thomas Longley, the Archbishop of Canterbury, married Alexandra and Albert Edward on March 10, 1863, at St George's Chapel in Windsor Castle, a site that both the press and prospective guests considered too small. Invited wedding guests included only Alexandra's closest relatives, disappointing the Danish people, and since Queen Victoria was still in mourning for Prince Albert, the ladies could wear only grey, lilac or mauve. When the newlyweds left Windsor for their honeymoon on the Isle of Wight, schoolboys at nearby Eton College, including Lord Randolph Churchill, cheered them. Alexandra's father became Danish King Christian IX in 1863, and her brother George accepted the throne of Greece as George the Fern. After his marriage, Albert Edward continued his relationships with other women, including Lily Langtry, the actress, Daisy Greville, Countess of Warwick, Agnes Kaiser, humanitarian, American Jenny Jerome, 
the future mother of Winston Churchill, and society matron Alice Keppel. Alexandra knew about most of her husband's relationships and bore them with dignity, remarking, He loved me the most. She permitted Alice Keppel to visit Albert Edward on his deathbed. Alexandra remained faithful to Albert Edward, Prince Albert Edward, and Alexandra settled into Marlborough House as their London home and chaussee, Sandringham House in Norfolk as a country retreat. The newlyweds entertained lavishly, and Queen Victoria disapproved what she considered their excessive socialising. Her contemporaries reported that Alexandra was dignified and charming in public and affectionate and fun-loving in private. She enjoyed activities including dancing, ice skating, and she also was a skilled horsewoman and tandem driver. Much to Queen Victoria's dismay, Princess Alexandra also enjoyed hunting, although the Queen unsuccessfully tried to make her refrain from hunting. Alexandra had a small scar on her neck that she hid it by wearing choker necklaces and high necklines, inadvertently setting a fashion precedent that survived for fifty years. A bout with rheumatic fever in 1867 left her with a stiff leg and a limp, but society ladies even copied her limping walk, which came to be known as the Alexandra Limp. Alexandra didn't understand money well, and she left managing her finances to her comptroller, Sir Dighton Probyn VC, who performed the same role for King Edward VII. She practised frugality when she had her old stockings darned for reuse and recycled her old dresses as furniture covers, but when her comptroller protested her more extravagant spending, she would wave her hand or pretend that she had not heard the complaints. Edward VIII, Queen Alexandra's grandson, who would later become the Duke of Windsor, summarised her attitude about money when he remarked that her generosity embarrassed her financial advisers because whenever she received a letter asking for money, she would immediately send out a cheque without investigating the organisation or people requesting the funds. Even after the couple's first child, Prince Albert Victor, was born, Alexandra socialised as much as she had before, which caused some problems with her mother-in-law, the Queen, especially since Alexandra hated Prussians and Queen Victoria favoured them. Although the two women were genuinely fond of each other, the relationship between Alexandra and her mother-in-law, Queen Victoria, could at times be strained. From the beginning, Alexandra, the Princess of Wales, enjoyed immense popularity with the British public, much like her 20th century counterpart, Princess Diana. Her beauty captivated many of her subjects, but her enormous charm made them love her. For many years, she and Prince Bertie were the public symbols of British monarchy because Queen Victorian secluded herself after Prince Albert's death and did not attend public functions. Queen Victoria did not give the Prince of Wales any real responsibility, forcing him to serve his country in indirect ways and perhaps encouraging his womanising. As the years passed, Alexandra endured her husband's philandering with dignity, which further endeared her to the British public. For a long time, Alexandra was the most popular member of the royal family, and at time the crowds would cheer her and boo the Prince of Wales. Queen Victoria must have noted this, and perhaps resented her daughter-in-law's popularity. The births of Alexandra's first two children, Albert Victor and George, were premature, but she survived them in good health. The birth of Princess Louise on February 20th, 1867, was quite different. After the delivery, Alexander became ill enough for the doctors to ask Queen Victoria and her own parents to come to her bedside. Her husband carried on his social life and flirtations and did not appear. Alexander survived, but recovered as a changed person, both physically and emotionally. She had been an active, outgoing young woman, but now had a noticeable limp, and her illness had aggravated her otosclerosis, abnormal bone growth in the middle ear that causes hearing loss, and she became increasingly deaf. She used her charm and grace to deal with her otosclerosis, which some biographers say she inherited from her mother. She never recovered from the death of their oldest son, Prince Albert Victor, Duke of Clarence, 
who died on January 14, 1892, during an influenza epidemic. Much like her mother-in-law Queen Victoria did for Prince Albert, Alexandra left her son's room and possessions exactly as they had been the day he left them. In 1894, her brother-in-law Alexander III of Russia died, and her nephew Nicholas II became Tsar. Alexandra travelled to Russia to support her widowed sister Marie, Sophie Frederica Dagmar, or Maria Feodorovna, Empress of all the Russias, as she was known in Russia. She slept, prayed, and stayed by her sister's side until Alexander was buried and stayed on in Russia for some time, despite the objections of her mother-in-law, Queen Victoria. The death of her mother, Queen Louise of Denmark in 1898, added to her mourning. After Queen Victoria died in January 1901, Albert Edward became King Edward VII and Alexandra, his Queen Empress consort. In March 1901, the King and Queen's son George and their daughter-in-law Mary embarked on an extensive tour of the empire, leaving their young children with their grandparents. While George and Mary toured the empire, Edward and Alexandra prepared for the coronation of Edward Albert as King Edward VII in June 1902. A few days before the coronation, King Edward became seriously ill with appendicitis and Alexandra stood in for him at a military parade and attended the Royal Ascot races in his place so the public wouldn't be alarmed at his absence. The coronation was postponed and Dr Frederick Trevis of the London Hospital operated on Edward to drain his infected appendix. After he recovered, Alexandra and Edward were crowned together in August 1902 with the Archbishop of Canterbury, Frederick Temple crowning Edward, and the Archbishop of York, William Dalrymple MacLagan crowning Alexandra. In 1910, Alexander set a precedent when she became the first Queen Consort to visit the British House of Commons during a debate. For two hours, she sat in the ladies' gallery that overlooked the chamber, while members of Parliament debated the Parliament Bill, which would remove the right of the House of Lords to veto legislation, a bill that Alexandra opposed. A few weeks later, while Alexandra visited her brother, King George III, of Greece in Corfu, her family sent her word that her husband had been stricken with several heart attacks. She arrived home on May 5, 1910, and on May 6 she personally administered oxygen from a gas cylinder to help him breathe. King Edward VII died on May 6, 1910. Queen Alexandra observed that she felt like she had been turned into stone, unable to cry, unable to grasp the meaning of it all. Edward VII and Queen Alexandra's son George became the new king, and later in the year Queen Alexandra moved out of Buckingham Palace to Marlborough House, keeping Sandringham in Norfolk as her residence. The new King George immediately faced a decision about the Parliament Bill, and he reluctantly agreed to Prime Minister H. H. Asquith's request to create an adequate number of Liberal peers after a general election if the House of Lords continued to block the legislation. Although she opposed the bill, Alexandra supported her son. In 1911, Alexandra did not attend the coronation of King George, because tradition dictated that a crowned queen should not attend the coronation of another king or queen, but she continued her charitable work. World War I only intensified Alexandra's dislike and distrust of Germans. She detested her nephew Kaiser Wilhelm II and voiced her revulsion in no uncertain terms during the controversy about the banners of foreign princes. During World War I, some people criticised the custom of hanging the banners of foreign princes awarded the Order of the Garter, Britain's highest order of knighthood, in St George's Chapel, Windsor Castle. The critics said that since the German members of the order were fighting against Britain, their banners should be removed. Bowing to public opinion, King George had the banners taken down, but he went a step further and ordered both the Prussian banners and Hessian banners removed. In Alexandra's opinion, their Hessian relatives were just soldiers or servants acting under that brutal German emperor's orders. On September 17, 1916, 
Queen Alexandra endured a Zeppelin air raid close to her Sandringham residence, but the Russian branch of her family suffered much worse. In Russia, the Bolsheviks overthrew her nephew Tsar Nicholas II and murdered him and his wife and children. In 1919, HMS Marlborough rescued the Dowager Empress, Alexandra's sister Maria, and brought her to England where she lived with Alexandra for some time. In her senior years, Alexandra no longer travelled abroad and her health deteriorated. On November 20th, 1925, at age 80 she suffered a fatal heart attack at Sandringham House in Norfolk. She was buried on November 28th, 1925, beside her husband at St George's Chapel, Windsor Castle. Tradition has it that when Diana became Princess of Wales on July 29th, 1981, well-wishers handed her a biography of Queen Alexandra by Georgina Battiscombe. They believed it would be a helpful guide to coping with her new position, the same position that Alexandra assumed on March 10, 1863, and filled so successfully.